Greetings fellow humans and lizard people. Today we're going to be fixing a Quartz SCSI expansion board for Triton synthesizers. When I got this expansion board for my Triton rack, to me it seemed that it was working properly as it was being recognized by the synth, but whenever I tried to use a SCSI to SD adapter I could never get the synth to see any SCSI device attached to it. After a long time trying to check if the SCSI to SD adapter's configuration was the culpable here, I eventually decided to trace some voltages. What led me to this was that most devices like the SCSI to SD adapter that have a USB connection, namely devices that are or act as USB storage devices, have LEDs indicating reads and or writes being performed in the device. And whenever the SCSI to SD adapter was connected to my Triton rack, I could never see its LEDs blinking. The measurement being performed in this video is only for demonstration purposes. My first measurement was done on the field and the following is just an explanation on how to trace the fault. Of importance is to note that the SCSI to SD adapter draws all of its power from the host. That means there is at least one pin in the SCSI connector that provides power for connected devices that require it. My field testing measured no voltage coming out of this pin. While tracing the SCSI connector pin to the corresponding pin in the flat ribbon cable that connects to the synth, I already found the fault. To be sure about it, we are going to inject 5 volts into this pin and follow the voltage until there is none. And as you could notice, we measured a voltage drop across a couple of diodes, and right after them there is a fuse labeled FU1 on the board, with a marking of 2-0 on top of the fuse, that on one side has voltage, but no voltage on the other side. So we found our culprit, the FU1 fuse. The likely scenario of how it got damaged is that the previous owner of this expansion board tried to connect a CD-ROM or hard drive to it without connecting its external power supply. The peripheral tried to draw all of its power from the SCSI connector, which is very likely more power than what the expansion board is allowed to provide through the SCSI connector, which led to the fuse blowing. Since I'm still honing my skills in SMD rework, I always like to start with flux, because it just makes things easier, especially if you don't have the optimal equipment for the job. But the optimal equipment is not a requirement. SMD rework can be done with very basic tools. For this job I just had a heat gun, a very good soldering iron, and a very cheap USB microscope. Although depending on the job and how good is your eyesight, a microscope is not needed. For this job, the SMD components were still large enough for my eyes, and I'm not complaining about my eyesight. Yet. Whenever you are working with heat guns or hot air rework stations, tweezers are a must to remove the components off the board, as well as to place them back on the board. Depending on the size of the target component, as of now, I'm aiming for low air pressure out of my heat gun in order to avoid perturbing the placement of adjacent SMD components. Air pressure can be affected by the nozzle, so that's something to always keep in mind. As for temperatures, I'm aiming for high, but not the highest my heat gun can do. Anything between 400 to 500 degrees Celsius, or the equivalent fake units. And also depending on how much heat is the target board going to absorb and dissipate away from the target component. For a while, I thought on how to proceed about soldering the replacement fuse in place, since it can be done either with a soldering iron or a heat gun. The placement of the fuse made it too difficult to work around that area with just a soldering iron, so I ended up using the heat gun. But for assurance, I wanted to at least solder one of the fuse sides, so that there would be less of a risk of me moving it around with the tweezers while I had the heat gun on top. As you can see in the images, 
one of the adjacent diodes was likely displaced either by the air pressure from the heat gun or by the tweezers as I was lifting away the blown fuse. This is something that I will have to touch up once the new fuse is soldered in place. For the diode, my expectation was that if I put more solder and flux on it, after the heat gun melts the solder, the diode will naturally sit in the center of its two pads. This didn't quite happen. The solder wire I'm using, I'm afraid it might be of low quality, as well as also being very old, at least 10 years old and barely used. So I had to push the diode a little bit with the tweezers into its correct position. I was aiming for close to perfection, so I decided to touch up as much as I could to give the solder joints that factory look. I decided to finish up with the soldering iron, because I didn't want to move any more components around with the heat gun. It got a little bit better, but it didn't quite match the expectations. Blame the solder wire, blame the lack of experience, blame capitalism, blame communism, Pick your poison. But in the end, if it works, it works. Some voltage measurements are in order. To be
be sure that the components are properly soldered to their pads. And as a last check, and to be sure that this wasn't just a waste of my time, I want to make sure that when I connect the SCSI to SD adapter to the now fixed expansion board, that I see the adapter's LEDs blink. This will be the ultimate proof that when the expansion board is installed again in my Triton rack, the SCSI to SD adapter will finally work with it. And look at that, no blinking LEDs. Because of course, how can a USB storage device act like one when the device has no storage medium? To protect the micro SD card, I decided to first do the test without it, but I figured that it was okay in the end, and without it, it was unlikely for the SCSI to SD adapter to blink its LEDs. And look at that, a blinking LED. Success! Now final step is a little bit of cleaning with IPA and then everything goes back into the synth. And in this last portion of the video, you can see how the synth boots with everything connected, the SCSI expansion board being recognized by the synth, finally being able to see four SCSI devices connected to the synth and formatting these devices. Please forgive me if the background music sounds a little bit on the depressing side of things. I just threw some quick chords to generate a loop for this video. Hopefully by the next one I will have something more uplifting. If you have any technical questions about what was covered in the video, please post them below. If you like videos about fixing, modding and building stuff, please subscribe to my channel. I hope to slowly build up the channel with content. Expect eventually some avenue for you to support me and even an avenue for me to help you. I might be open to accept repair inquiries. I hope you can use some of the information provided and you will see me next time. Not young. <laughs>